I'm Jared Falk, and today I'm going to talk to you about some advanced ghost note patterns. Now, if you haven't already checked out the beginner and the intermediate lesson on ghost notes, you want to do that. Uh, because if you're a beginner coming right into the advanced stuff, you're probably not going to understand a lot of the note values and other things that we're going to be dealing with, especially the techniques associated with performing ghost notes along with accented notes, all right? So now let's jump into the exercises I prepared for you. I basically got three exercises, okay? The first one is kind of a Rosanna shuffle. Not the exact or original Rosanna shuffle per se, but it's kind of a variation on that. Um, it's, it's a halftime shuffle, so we're playing as eighth note triplets, and we're basically inserting a ghost note in between um, each of the hi-hat strokes, okay? So the hi-hat pattern and the ghost notes would just look like this. All right, no one does a halftime shuffle like the master who played for Toto, Jeff Beccaro, okay? I'm not, I'm working there, but I don't ever claim or will never claim to be or have the groove that that guy had, okay? It was just insane. But that's kind of why I wanted to share this groove with you is, is because he makes such an awesome use of the ghost notes. And there's the Purdy shuffle and there's other people that have done this as well. But um, for this specific exercise, he is definitely most famous for that. And so once you've got that technique down, then it's all about just um, having the accent on count three and then getting the ghost note right after that. So let me play it for you guys at 70 beats per minute. Okay, this is really slow with eighth note triplets and I can show you how it sounds slowly. So the next groove I want to show you guys is kind of like a mix of, of paradiddle grooves and, and I permutate them in different ways. But the way I learned this is just practice the hand pattern first, okay? And these exercises, they're designed to help you get better at playing ghost notes and the techniques associated with performing ghost notes. And so this might not be a groove that you'll use throughout a whole song or anything like that, but it's definitely going to help you get better at playing ghost notes. All right, so let's just practice the hand pattern. So what you'll probably find challenging is count two. You know, the, the accented stroke down to the ghosted note. And then we have a hi-hat stroke, only one hi-hat stroke in between there. So we're not doing our constant eighth notes. And then we have another ghost note. And so because we got this kind of broken up hi-hat pattern, or you can put on the ride or the bell or whatever, uh, but because we have that pattern, it's going to make performing the ghost notes harder, but it's also going to help us get better at doing that, right? So now let's add in the bass drum. And I'm going to play it for you guys at 50 beats per minute. All right, now I'll play the same groove for you at 100 beats per minute. All right, so because of all the linear elements in that pattern, it's going to be a hard one to keep together. And especially when you practice it slowly, you'll notice I actually put an eighth note click there when I went down to 50 beats per minute, just because the space in between there is so long. So I just moved the click up to 100 and just focused on the quarter note of that eighth note click. And it just helped me kind of stay right on it throughout the whole groove. 
All right, now the final exercise I want to talk to you guys about has a very unique thing in there that's going to be very, very challenging. And that is basically on count three. Okay, you'll notice it goes three triplet and triplet four. Okay, and then we have an accent and note on count four. And doing the, the two 16 note triplet quiet notes right to um, an accented note on count four can be very, very challenging. Basically what you have to get good at or you have to practice is two quick quiet notes followed by an accented note. And to get the accent, I actually will do a rim shot on the snare drum. Just because I find it hard to go from two quiet notes right in the middle of the snare and then up, back down, accent note in the middle of the snare. So I can more easily get an accent if I do a rim shot. And especially when you get faster because the motions are so small, it's sometimes the only way to actually do it and to actually get an accented note. All right, so let's just practice that, okay? Two notes and then an, an accented rim shot. All right, so that's what you're gonna have to practice. So let me play it for you guys really slow, again, at 50 beats per minute, so you can hear how it sounds. All right, so this is a great groove to put in, you know, at the end of a phrase. You know, you play three bars of just solid time, and you put this in right on, you know, bar four, um, going into the count four accent, and then back into the start of the phrase again. It just adds a lot, and I think other musicians will love you if you do it. And don't overdo it, but just throw it in every once in a while, and they'll definitely appreciate it, okay? So let me show you guys how it sounds at 100 beats per minute. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this advanced ghost note drum lessons. Now, if you guys have any requests for additional lessons or you have any questions on these lessons, feel free to check out the drumlessons.com drum forum, okay? There's like a community of well over 10,000 people that would absolutely um, love your feedback on your, and your opinion on certain things, but would also be more than happy to help you out if you have any questions. I'm in there regularly, so I'd be more than happy to chat with you about anything. Uh, any questions you have regarding these lessons or any other lessons. So thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you guys again soon.